They liked us too because they were full of little black specks because we had boundaries in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Things floating in the air, did you? Yeah. Oh, our snow was never white. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was always flecked with black. When they talked about hey. making snow ice cream, I thought, oh. <laughs> okay, I want you to pull out your um, observation worksheet and your times thing. What page is that on? Uh, no, that's 81. This is the very bad. Bad. Yeah, the very, very bad. Yeah. Right. If it's still in the same spot. Right, which I move it and then I'm going to look at it when I've lost it. Good morning. Hey, good morning. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pray, and then we'll close the door. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you that we can get back together again and just enjoy one another's company and the wisdom that we have all gleaned from your word. Thank you for including this book in this historical time, and I just pray that you would uh, help us as we apply it to ourselves. In your precious name, we pray. Amen. Okay, if we're going to look into the historical setting of Esther, um, it's very interesting. Good morning. Um, again, make sure you have out this so we can refer to that and you can correct my dates should not be to correct my dates. <laughs> yeah. That's quite possible. Page Just page saying. Page one. <laughs> Me and maps are liking each other again and timelines not so much. I just, I don't know. I always go, I think this is what it says and I'm going to write it down in pencil because it could be wrong and that way I can erase it and make it right. So, or I glean from y'all on your talents. Okay, when did the events of Esther 1 take place? Because it absolutely states it. 486. Good, good. Specifically, I have 483. 483. 483. So yeah. come on in, um, chair, or if Shannon's okay with you sitting next to her, then I'm seven. Call. Call. <laughs> Just don't call for them. Um, um, and will you, will you close that door? Fatu, will you close? Or somebody close the door? Thank you. Okay, and why do we want to know? Because we kind of get a little bit. As we go to chapter two, we kind of go, aha, why is it important that it's the third year of King Hazarus? He didn't act immediately. He didn't act immediately, right, yeah. Oh, so again, how important is it that we write, underline where it is and when it is? That's just amazing to me. Shannon. So reading Wearsby, he was talking about the historical like people that study history back then, mm -hmm. and it's really it made a lot come to life. So apparently his his dad tried to take over Greece and expand the empire and lost. Right. So he was trying to to go back and take yeah. Greece, and the whole banquet was all trying to get everybody on his side. He was this reason he did a right. six month banquet was to show his power and get everybody on his side so they could attack Greece. Good. Yeah. Now Kate brings that up as a. Could they possibly have been getting buttered up and all this kind of stuff? Wait, wait, possible. Um, what else? Okay, guys. What else? Do you know about the, what? Where is he ruling? What is he ruling? Maybe I should do that. Do what? Do I have? He's great. Rule. Persia, from okay. India he's not to a Mede. Ethiopia. He's a Persian from India to Ethiopia. Yeah. He's also called Xerxes. Right. Very important that we know he's both names. He has okay. a Persian name too that's not mentioned in the Bible. There's a, his Ashurshus, that's his Hebrew name. Xerxes is his Greek name, and then there's the, PD, the Persian name. It's a third one. I it was in weird didn't name. Uh, that's good. I didn't know that either. So I thought it was interesting that they don't give you the Persian one. No, they don't. The two you know is not the Persian. That was interesting to me. Um, why do you think he's in Susa? When you looked at the map, why do you think he's in the Persian kingdom of Susa? Because there's a palace there? Well, it's in the middle. It's in the middle. It's in the middle, middle of the yeah. territory. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I mean, that's just an opinion, but I'm like, so he's smack in the middle. Um, again, he's got Jews in his kingdom. Historical setting, we want to remember because uh, everything from our point of view, remember this is a Jewish book, 
This is about what nation? Bible is about what nation? Israel. 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 So everything's got to go back to. Mm -hmm. In relation to Israel, when is this happening? Okay? They're in exile. Sure. Mm -hmm. We know because we've read Daniel. Maybe you've read Daniel. Maybe you've, I don't know. Okay? But you think of the statue in Daniel. The head was who? Babylon. Babylon. Right. King Nebuchadnezzar. I am the head of it, of course, because that's Nebuchadnezzar. Next came the Silver, Medo Persian. Medo Persian Empire. So, according to Israel's history and prophecy, this is where we are. Okay? So, that's, again, because you're a Christian and you study the Word of God and this is what you base your life on and everything is about Israel and what revolves around Israel, where are we in regard to that? This is, statue wise, this is where we are. Okay? If we believe prophecy, which we do, we know another kingdom is coming. Okay, so Greece is Greece is coming, and then Rome, and then everybody else. Everybody else, right? Okay. Um, again, if you were in your Bible, I would put over Esther. This is Israel's captivity, seventy years. Okay, they're in captivity with Babylon for. Years. I think they have a seven-year captivity. Yes, and it's Babylon. It's Babylon for seven years. who sent them there. That's why they're there. Correct. But it's not during the 70 years. <clears throat> no. No, 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 no. 60 years after. Because we know this is also right. during Ezra. And because and we know that when Ezra, they went back, they were allowed back by Cyrus the Mede. Okay? Uh, 2 Kings 24. That was one of your cross-references. Page 10 and 11 in your homework. Um, and then you go back to your timeline. You know, talking, okay, where's that? And if I were you, you know, I would also look at that and go, Babylon, what book of the Bible fits here? Okay, that's 2 Kings 24. Because they destroyed the city in 597 BC. Is that what you see on your? timeline thing. Okay, again, feel feel free to correct me on my dates so you go, uh, not seeing that one. Mixed up, so. Okay, did you, Marianne, did you say something? Well, I'm looking at my, it <clears throat> says the destruction of Jerusalem was in 586. 586, that's what I always um, have to. 586 BC, okay, is when they destroyed one, the yeah. temple. The people in the temple and the artifacts got that. They went in in 597 destruction. Again, I'm not standing on that. I'm not, you know, falling on my sword on that. It said it was they went in and they took they killed the king, put a new king in charge, and then they took the, the precious vessels from the temple. They, in 586, yes. In 597. Five, five, and then when they went back, they destroyed everything. Then the temple goes down. That's so they didn't yes. destroy it yeah. first, yeah. they yeah. destroyed okay, it. Okay, good. Thank right. you. Thank you. Good, that's, good, good. that's what I'm leaning to. I just, you know, again, I'm not falling on my sword on that one. That's just, <laughs> it's just what I see. Okay. Think. How long is that? Five ninety-seven to five eighty-six. Temple's still there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Think about how the people are living in Jerusalem. Are they coming back? Are they going? Are they going to? This is not a peaceful time. And the people are going there. And the people are yes. Okay. This is this is not good. Do you think they know why this happened? <laughs> well, we hope. They well, we, they should, right? We, we, they they certainly should. should. They should because they, <laughs> they are there because of sin. Yeah. They have not allowed the land to rest on the Sabbath and rest, and it's not been done and Wednesday. not been done and not been done. So now we need seventy years for the land to have Sabbath. Although they should, though. We're very good at making excuses. I mean, why are we right? where we are? <laughs> Thank <laughs> like, you. Right? Who's like, been saying that? How many people have you heard talking about why we are and where we are at? Exactly. So I, I don't point the finger so much anymore. <laughs> I learn. I go, well, how am I like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. You had cross-references on page 11. Um, and we kind of referenced a little bit about Daniel 5. Because, again, we're just trying to get the historical setting. Where are we at this point? What do you learn in Daniel 5? Daniel 5 was the handwriting on the wall. Mm -hmm. So this was where um, the 
Babylonians basically lose their kingdom. Belshazzar. Belshazzar. 538. Okay. Uh, yeah. Never Great his son. story, right? I remember the big finger on the wall, you know, and you have been found on the scales and lack, you're lacking, you're wanting to die, you're going to lose your kingdom. Yeah. And Daniel was old, man. And, and, started and Daniel talks to the king and tells him all that. I'm like, oh, yeah. he's not going to. He's not gonna like that. Go well. It does not <laughs> stop Daniel from saying the truth the way it is. He's a wow. wise man. He is a wise man, yes. And has proved himself yes. as a wise man. He's okay? 85. Yeah. Good. Remember that Belshazzar is the final king in the Babylonian Empire. There is no more king or in Babylon after Belshazzar. Oh, and his king Cyrus, who. Right. Yeah, that's okay. So. He desecrates the temple articles. How does he desecrate them? They drink from them. All of his body. guests drink yeah. from. Yeah. They're using them for parties. Right. These mm -hmm. sanctified. Mm -hmm. Set apart. Set apart. Holy articles. Well, it's crazy to me is how long they've been in storage and nobody has touched them. I was actually slightly impressed that it made it that long in a non-Jewish, don't believe in Jewish God. That's recorded. Yeah. That we know of. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that we know of. Um, he said that very night, the Medes and the Persians conquered Babylon. So on that statue, we have now moved from the head to the breast. Okay? <clears throat> that very night. How, how come Daniel was so confident that tonight you're going to hock a stock and get his I mean, he's not God. No, Somebody told him. Somebody told him. Right, right. And who interpreted the statue and the meaning of the statue for Nebuchadnezzar? Okay. Way back. Daniel did that. How cool of God to let him live through, okay, the head. Well, that's the present time you're living. Great, okay. But now, remember, I told you that the meat and purchase are coming? Well, that's going to happen tonight. How cool, if you're Daniel. How cool to stand there and go, wow, that is the statue interpretation is coming true in my lifetime. Because he didn't tell him how long each one. He just told him that was going to happen. But he we're still waiting for the toast. We're still waiting for He respected those authority. He was much wiser than was the. Yes. And, you know, his habit of prayer and all that kind of, never yeah. stopped. Never stopped. No matter where he was or who ruled over him. Yeah. You think that kind of. Encourage his faith and kind of oh, put, put some extra man. strength in his faith. Right? Like, oh, I'm watching it right now. Mm -hmm. Right? That's just so personal of God to go, see what I said was true, but let me show you that this is true. Okay? Darius the Mede received the kingdom. What do you think of with Darius the Mede? You like that. Okay. What book of the Bible do you obviously go back to? We're in Esther now. Where does she have to go back to? Darius the Mede. She had us going to Isaiah and she had us to Good. Good. I can't help it. I, there was a, um, you may have directed, I can't remember, the children's play, and it was about Darius the Mede. And you know, his, um, his rule it cannot be changed, it cannot be changed. You know, make it a list, cannot be changed. And I, was, I will never forget that because I'm like, oh, the, the, the rules of the, the need, the, once they write it, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Now you can try and find a way to fix it around that, but you can't change the rule. The rule's the rule. Now, my daughter Allison had that part. See? And we have a picture that's of her. That's been a while ago then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't act in it, but my kids did, and I will never forget that. You know, they're just kind of these little. Just like a little kid telling on somebody, yeah. can't be changed, can't be changed, can't be changed, can't be changed. And I was like, she said it just and like so I too. read that and because of, you know, Melmacon wants the, the law written in the meets and the Persians. So I'm like, right. it can't be changed, which cannot be replaced. I'm like, how do I recall that? That's how I remember that. It's like, so that's great. That's how I remember that. <laughs> Cyrus the Persian and Darius yeah. the Mede so reign. Okay? That's, that's important for us to know. Um, you had a cross reference in Second Chronicles. <coughs> Why did she? Now, I also want to, I'm assuming this, but I don't ever want to assume. First and second kings are the kings. Good, bad, they reigned so long, then they died, blah, blah, blah. Chronicles is the chronicles of those kings. Mm -hmm. If you want to know more about those kings and what they did, you might find it in Chronicles, you might not. But usually more detail, more people, more times are in the Chronicles. Okay? 
which is cool because you have, if we look at the Bible, and Kay starts out the DVD of how awesome it is that we have the Word of God, how awesome to study the Word of God. And I didn't really get the awesomeness of it until she gets about halfway through the DVD. I'm like, oh. It is awesome. I mean, I always think it's awesome, but that, that, that really makes it awesome. You're right. Um, because it is such a historically correct mm. book. And I it's say. proved and proved and proved and proved by archaeology. Yeah. And the more archaeology we find, the more correct people see the Bible is. Mm -hmm. Now, why do we want to know, um, I was going to say, the first five books of the Bible. Okay, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. That's written by who? Moses. Moses. Holy Spirit through Moses. Okay, Holy Spirit through Moses, because he wasn't there in and the heart. That's all what the okay? Jews has, yeah. What comes next? That's then we have Joshua. Then we have Joshua, because it's all about Israel. Okay, and now we go into Joshua. They Joshua. take the land. We go into Joshua, Judges, which we just finished. We get Ruth, which is very cool. <clears throat> but now we know why they're in Moab and why she comes back and all that kind of stuff. Okay, then what do you have? First and second. Samuel, why do you have to have Samuel before Kings? Because he's the one who crowned the first king. There we go. This is logical. Oh, okay, <laughs> He crowned the first king and he oh, was yeah. the last judge. <laughs> right. So why do we have Chronicles after Kings? To know no, about the king more detail yeah. okay so just to I was never taught the Bible like that mm -hmm. I love Bible drill I knew what they were yeah. that's great but why are they put the way they are put this yeah. is just a little bit of why they're put the way they're put okay in 2nd Chronicles 36 what kind of detail do you get to add to the story from 2nd Kings Exactly what was taken. That was important. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We get the nitty gritty in Chronicles and why Cyrus does what he does. We don't find that out in Kings, but we find it out in Chronicles. The Lord stirred mm -hmm. Cyrus's heart to let the Jews return and build the temple. Mm -hmm. Oh, so now I can go on my little times and go, oh, this is where we are. They're not ruled by the Babylons anymore. The Babylonians, they're ruled by the Medes and Persians. Cyrus is a Persian. Yes, he's Cyrus a Persian. Persian. Right, because Darius is the Mede. Cyrus. Okay? And he allows them to go back and rebuild the temple. But is he still ruling over? Oh. Yes, it's a different rule than the Babylonians. They didn't rule the same way. Okay? Um, Isaiah 44. Time wise, when is this? Oh my before. goodness. Yes. Before Cyrus is even born. One hundred Cyrus. years before he oh, even born. Even and born, he names him. Yeah. Holy Spirit hit me so mm -hmm. hard in this. I was in a la la land. Is that a amazing? <laughs> I'm just like, oh he names him. Do you think Isaiah knew what he was talking about? Mm -hmm. No. No. He just no. Told <laughs> but it's like, no. <laughs> but God told me to How say this. Good this is what we're going to do. So this is what we're going to do. Oh, and I'm going to write that. Yeah. I'm just like. Who's Cyrus? Isaiah goes, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Nor am I going to be here when he gets here. <laughs> he says, just like, I'm just going to be obedient. I'm, I'm going to be obedient. Write right. down what God says. Yeah. Now, had Isaiah, I don't think Isaiah was alive during Cyrus because they lived so long. I, I don't know. But if Isaiah had made an incorrect prophecy, what would have happened to him? He'd have been killed. Him He'd have been killed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. It only took one time to get wrong. Right. Once. So I think Isaiah was pretty confident when he talked. Mm -hmm. This is what God said. Because his life is on the line. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, the temple was completed in 516 BC. Everybody agree on that one? Okay. Um, why do we want to know that? Why is that important as, as we study Esther? The Jews are there to sacrifice them. She's a Jew. Yeah. Mordecai's a Jew. And something like that is monumental for her yes. and her people. And her people. Right. Mm -hmm. The temple is rebuilt. Yeah. Which means they can do sacrifices again. Yes. They can meet with God again. Yes. So religion gets back in. We can go to church again. Yes! <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> we can go to church again! Uh, 
know. Without masks. Without masks. Question though, <laughs> why isn't she and Mordecai in Jerusalem then? They're part of the remnant that stayed back. They are the part of the remnant that stayed back and um, evidently she had a job to do. the heart of his family wasn't stirred to go back. Yeah. Yeah. I'm assuming. I'm assuming that's why they're not there because why would Mordecai tell Esther not to tell who your people are? Right. Yeah. There's some sort of fear. There's some sort right. of yeah, to keep it quiet. Right. We don't know why at yet. Right. Because we read Esther. I mean Ezra, and we know. Um, hang on just a second. The book of Esther. I'm gonna put in that timeline. Okay. 483 to 473, so we know the temple's built. Right. We know Cyrus allowed him to go back. We know Nehemiah and Ezra, books, they mm -hmm. must be. Mm -hmm. I might even be able to read those two books and go, this is during the time of Esther, if I want to know some more history. Okay? Yes? I thought it was interesting. Weird to be pointed out, which I didn't think until he said it, but he pointed out the fact that they weren't fully, they, there's no way they were fully following joy, Jewish customs no. and not noticed to be Jew. That if they were not eating oh. unclean meat and fully following the Jewish customs, then they would have known from the beginning Esther was a Jew because it would have been obvious. I mean, she's living right. in the palace. It would be obvious what she's eating, what she's doing. And she would have she's praying, if she's doing all the things she's supposed to be doing as a Jew. But didn't they know Mordecai was a Jew? Or am I mixing the st fiction story I read? Up? Did they? Uh, oh, no. We're not allowed to know that yet, Miss Joni, because we're not in chapter three. Oh, so. Okay. <laughs> so stay tuned. Same bat channels. Same bat. I, I never thought of that until he said it. I was like, "That's true." Like That's really she's, true. Living, she's living in the palace and was following all the Jewish customs. Yeah. It would have been obvious she was Jew. So then, so weirdly said, you know, I'm not taking her faith down. Obviously, she no. had great faith or anything. But then you question, maybe they've just been living there for a while, more comfortable, and that's why they didn't head back because they adopted kind of the culture. Adopted the culture. Like there was a lot of like, the, and then you also bring and those are good assumptions because they're logical yeah, because yes. they don't know that Esther is a Jew and it would really stand out. I got to say, I debated that and I did not come to his conclusion at all. What you come up I think that they were probably living as Jews because I related it just today. How observant are you about the people around you if they're not your closest friends? If you're not in their home and interacting with them? It is completely believable that they were good Jews, but that the people of the town did not identify them as such because they never associated with them because the Jews yeah. wouldn't. Plus, and it, it could have been then because they had no say. Plus, what were they They're taken. for? They're yeah. taken. Taken, 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 taken. for young, beautiful, 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 beautiful yeah. women. That's There's one. Care about. But There's one. one. <laughs> There's one. No. But they have to go the into that, that culture, that village. Yeah. You know, of of people that would have been, oh, the Jews live here and the Persians live here, and the, you know? But they didn't have, yeah, well, see, that's the thing. If she was in the palace, they were like, they would dress them. Which they did, like, but they didn't go to Jerusalem. They had people feed them. them. Like, they yeah, know, I see what so you're saying. So their praying would have been done in their house. Yeah, have, but Mordecai was sitting at the gate in a place of prominence. Yeah. So they must, I would see. They must have known. See? This is all speculation for the moment because we're only confined. To those first two chapters. I and agree for with now, they don't there, know the like, and she's in the palace. And that's true. True. As of, like, she had handmaids yeah. and stuff. They knew what she was eating. It wasn't just like a. I mean, they, they were living Mordecai together. She, she, they, they had servants. Word would get around if she was refusing yeah. the king's food. Oh well, yeah, that's true. So, it would have because that's what happened to Daniel and his wife. But still, say she refused. It didn't say that. It's just soaking in words. This is interesting. That is, but again. And she finds favor, finds favor, finds favor, finds favor as well. Because so. it's a good well, plan. Myself. <laughs> if you have to put a theme on Esther 1, that's the only thing I could come up with. Um, hopefully you guys have a better one than that. Wealthy king, obviously. Vashti mm -hmm. refuses the audience, and there's an edict. That's what happens during that. What are some that y'all have? I also added three banquets. All in one chapter. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because obviously that's a key word in this book. So, did you have wealthy king and Vashti and all that edict, and then you put three banquets at the end? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah. What else? That's about. That's it. 
Yeah, I mean, I think King gives banquet bastion refuses to come. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very obedient. All right, let's read verses 1 to 4, I think it is. Yeah. Now, it took place in the days of Hazarus, the Hazarus who reigned from India to Ethiopia over 127 provinces. Interesting, God needs to point that out. Oh, that <laughs> Just so you don't, yeah, oh, right? A lot of details. In those days, as King Ahasuerus sat on his royal throne, which was at the citadel in Susa, more detail. In the third year of his reign, he gave a banquet for all his princes and attendants, the army officers of Persia and Media, the nobles and the princes of his provinces, being in his presence. I hope you underlined in his presence a lot too, because that's so repeated. And he displayed the riches of his royal glory and the splendor of his great majesty for many days, 180 days. I've never seen so much detail in four verses in my entire life. <laughs> I'm like, food, bunch of wine. I'm like, I can't imagine Susa. the kitchen staff. And, uh, right, <laughs> right, right. Okay. And the laundry. Um, Ew. So he rules over 127 provinces. So, so you look at the map. That's a lot. That's a big so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a big so. Uh, uh, that's that's so far. That is so far. Now, it's in his third year. Mm. That must be important to God to put it in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I started numbering the banquets. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yep. Okay. So you've got banquet number one. Um, tell me about that. The long one. Hmm. Very long. Well, very was, long. Yeah. Six, the six months. Was, was with long. The, the important display of the long. riches was long. The well, display so of the riches. Well, so said that what, what how the customary in that time is he had different people from different areas of the province come in. It was a hundred and eight day party in the palace, but different people were coming and going because he couldn't that leave his sense. whole entire empire without leaders for that long. Ooh. So these leaders came and left, and these leaders came and left. Ooh. So that was the customary of that time. Mm-hmm. That and. Okay. My gosh, he's got a lot of people come in if he's reigning over 127 provinces. Well, and it was for all of his leadership. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. The the yeah. There you go. The is, uh, so isn't that good, though, that he's a king, but he's seeing this leader come in, and then this is the guy from over here, and it's not like he can just go next door. and He's getting eye to eye with the guy he's trusting to rule like he wants him to over that province, over that province. So it's, it's nice. But I think it's also very strategical as he does that. He's showing his power. Showing his power. And uh, Kay brings in his love of beauty. He was yeah. an artist, obviously, uh, when we get a little bit further down. He displayed his riches, royal glory, and the splendor of his greatness. Take it all in. Right? Folks. All I could think of was I go back to Babylon and the hanging gardens and this. Well, now we're in the Medes and the Persians. They were amazing to Carrying on the tradition. Carrying on the tradition of you. And those are key to word royal, too. The yes. royal title, the royal glory, royal. Right, that is also, a, you're right. That's it was all about position. position. It was very much Good point. Yeah. position. Good point. Uh, verse 5, when these days were completed, how many days? Right. The king gave a banquet. Again? Yeah. Number two. How long does it last? Seven, Seven days. days. Seven days. For all the people who were present at the citadel in Susa. So this is the people that he... Come on. Yeah. Right. From greatest to least, it says. Yeah. In the court. Okay, they're confined. Yeah. yeah. They're not going in, but they're in the court, okay, uh, of the garden of the king's palace, which was a, wasn't pretty at all. No. Uh, yeah, right. Oh my gosh. No golden chair. Wow. <laughs> there were, like, there were hangings chairs. of fine white and violet linen held by cords of fine purple linen on silver rings and marble columns, couches of gold and silver on a mosaic, pa you're walking on a mosaic yeah. pavement of, I don't know how to say that thing, porphyry, I guess. I don't know. Marble, mother of pearl. You're walking on mother of pearl. I'll get it. <laughs> and precious stones. This is, sounds like heaven uh, yeah. described a little bit. Okay. Drinks were served in golden vessels of various kinds, and the royal wine was plentiful. This is another repeated phrase. According to the king's, and then it just changes. According to the king's bounty. The drinking was done according to. Oh. Yeah. They had a law. 
drinking about water. drinking. No. So be too. <laughs> there was no we compulsion. Need some here, don't we? <laughs> so you can drink it if you want. You don't if you don't have to. Other translations, so I saw it as that you didn't have to drink, but then when I looked at other translations, they were translating it that there was no limit on the drink. You could drink all you wanted with no stopping. Because there's no compulsion. So yeah. it's again. Yeah. So uh, on the, no, yeah. It's no still your choice, though. Place on the drink. Still your choice. When you want to. Drink when you want and how much you want. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> For so the king had given himself. orders to each official of his household. I'm assuming these are the servants that are serving the drink. And that he should do according to the desire of each person. So now you got according to the king's bounty, according to the king's law, and according to the desires. Right. What do you want? Okay. What do you wish? What? Wow. I, I want to go to this party. How much alcohol is that? That's a lot. <laughs> Queen Vashti, first appearance. Okay. She also gave a banquet for the women in the palace. Why do they have to add which belonged to King Hazareth? Because he had harems. Wow. He had two harems. See? The virgins and the concubines. Location, 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 yeah. right? And How they're his. his. And it's his. Right. Yeah, she doesn't own them. Yeah. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he's drunk. He commanded. Is seventh day for me there? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Mahuman, Vista, Harbona, Vixa, Ab. Abgatha, Abagtha, sorry, Zethar and Carcass, the seven eunuchs who served, here we go again, in the presence of the king. It doesn't seem like this guy is ever by himself. Back to the detail. Like, they name these people, they're never ever named again, so what's right. the point? Why did God give us their names? Like It shows the fact because, that he had very select people in his presence and around him that he trusted. Trusted. That was, to me, to me that's what was huge, is that they're in his presence, He's totally fine with them. Well, maybe he mentioned them by name because because he has so many. They must be important enough to him to mention them by name. Yeah, he knew them by that's name. A that's a good. That's a good. That's a good to think about. It's important to him to mention them. So let's just go a little bit further down to eleven and twelve. Um, These units were friends of the right to bring Queen Vashti before the king with her royal crown in order to display her beauty. So it's her beauty now he wants to display, okay? My trophy wife. Yes, yeah. to the people <laughs> and the princess, for she was beautiful. And she's where was Queen Bashar? Bash. So. She was in where his was, palace, right? Where Having her from? Bank. Oh, wait, it says, doesn't say. And we don't know from before. From history, I don't know that. I don't know that. But to charge seven to go get one. Right, isn't that funny? Okay. But Queen Vashti refused to come at the king's command, delivered by the eunuchs. And then the king became very angry and his wrath burned within him. Mm. Oh. This is the seventh day of drinking, too. Okay. Oh, girl. So he has banquet number two. Vashti has banquet number three, right? Mm -hmm. Again, you're just listing what's happening, okay? Right after banquet number one, he has another banquet, but for all the people. Do you think that was why Vasti didn't come because he was like, why didn't See? you invite me with all the problems? Yeah. yeah, right. I Could've. don't show myself to common people. Right. I wonder what he was wanting to display it's for cool. her beauty it's too. Totally possible. Yeah. Like, was it like he wanted her to come out pretty much scantily naked for all these drunk people to look at? Like, I wouldn't want to go either. So he's displaying her for her beauty. There's all these drunk people. How I long have they been married? No, no. We do. Oh, no. Well, no. With all this detail they give, like that's what I was like. There's all this detail, and then all of a sudden it's like, well, what? You know, like, right? what happened why? here? But she, I have so many questions. She should have gone because it, he was a queen. Yeah, yeah that's right. Just that like was Daniel was. always went when the respect. Yes. Okay. Why? Why did? Why did he send seven units? Why specifically units? Right. Well, because the they're no threat to her. The eunuchs were. That's why you trusted them. They yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. They couldn't do anything um, wrong. The way seven out. could have been not exactly. to force her to come, but to show honor to her. Right. And she to escort worthy her. to escort her. Because the queen would never go anywhere by herself. No, absolutely. And the, especially into the king's And the presence. importance of the calling of the king. Right. There's that's true, too. Right. It was that's true, too. To him. Yep. Because they're always well, in his presence. Well, that's true, too, because we probably don't know this yet, but in Esther, she can't approach him unless she's called. Unless she's right. called. Yeah. Correct. So and we do. That's in chapter two. Also, the place was full of drunkards, so. Right? Right? Kind of, you know. <laughs> you know why she wants, why the king wanted her to come. 
So he didn't want to have conversation. a conversation. He didn't want to show her smarts. No. He no. wanted to show her physical beauty. And because the crown. again, does the man love physical beauty? Yes. And the crown. Wow. That she had. Yeah. He sure does. You know, think about this. This is probably to the people who never see her. The commoners. Mm -hmm. Because they're commoners. Right. Yeah. So and he, it's in the court. He wanted to show the them house, it's in the court. how, if you're being nice to him, he wanted to show them how wonderful their queen was. Now, did he think it through? Probably not. He was, probably probably not. He was drunk. So. <laughs> 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 There's that. He was drunk after 187 days of party. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's just go. Yeah, well, you know, uh, they can grab the bear. Think of that new hangover, right? <laughs> Okay. So the result is the king gets angry. Yeah. Very. Right? And his wrath burns within him. Okay? Uh, verse 13. And the king said to the wise men who understood the times. I love that. Love that. Uh -huh. I just immediately had to make a list on the yeah. right hand side. What, what, what else about these wise men? Time. Uh -huh. yeah. It was the custom of the king to speak before all who knew law and justice. These wise men knew law and justice. And they were close to him. So again, they're in his presence. He trusts them. Um, yes. Then they're named. Karshina, Shephar, Admatha, Tarshish, Marys, Marsena, and Memokon. The seven princes of Persia. Of Persia. And Mina, yeah. who had access to the king's presence that's really important. Mm -hmm. And they sat in the first place in the kingdom. These guys were sharp. And I gave him a thumbs up on this. I he did had too. advisors that he went to. He didn't act rashly. He went to his advisors. And he had a group of people he went to, and he didn't just leave without any kind of advisors, right? I actually said, what? He didn't just say off with their head? He yeah, just he did like, flash out. Hearts? Yeah. He didn't well, maybe he out at all. That helped that he was trying to it, I thought, wow. <laughs> And that was his custom, was to speak and get advice from these guys. Okay, um, according to the law, here's his question. What is to be done with King Vashti because she did not obey the king, the command of King Ahasuerus delivered by the eunuchs? Very wise question. He doesn't want to go against the law, but he wants repercussions for being embarrassed because his queen won't come. And here he is before the people, and she won't come. But he's waiting three years. That's, That's right. Just In the presence of the king and the princes, which one speaks up? Yes. Memacon said, Memacon. Queen Vashti has wronged not only the kings, but also all the princes and all the peoples, peoples who were in all the provinces. <laughs> of King Ahasuerus. Mm -hmm. That was true. Mm -hmm. yep. But the king <coughs> needed to go according to the law. He needed to make sure he was above board and doing what was right. So what do you guys think I should do? <laughs> and these are wise men who understood the times. times. Okay? Our times are different. Okay. We used to be said that understood the times back then meant that they were uh, astrologers. They looked at the stars for for, for like mm -hmm. future stuff. Yep, in fact, that's possible too. Um, and they knew law and justice. Mm -hmm. These right, men, yeah. again, I want you to make sure you have the character qualities of these guys because this is, in in turn, a character quality of Hazards. He's not this uh, king that just flies off here and flies off there. I don't like this, I don't like that. So we're gonna, he seems to be able to contain himself and get wise mm -hmm. counsel and then act on the wise counsel, even though he is very angry and his wrath is burning within him. He's still acting. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> he's placed systems, yes. he's placed systems yes. in place. Yes. To, to make his kingdom last as long as possible. Right. Because it's a huge... And he's only three period. years into his reign. Right, right. Okay? At the same time, I saw a repeated phrase of the word pleased the king, and he did as... Is he, he went for advice, but he never made, he never made any of these decisions himself. Never. Except for calling her to come to him. That's right. the only decision and throwing a banquet. 
all the decisions the first two chapters, he just went with whatever somebody else Good. said. So, it's well, going with advice, but he's also not making his own that. decisions. But he's also three years into his reign, yeah. he's following his dad, who had a big kingdom. Therefore, he's inherited all this kingdom, and he's also remembers a lot of this rule and all has been put in by the previous kings, so he's smart enough to... And we'll, we'll find works. out, according to the you know DVD, unless you know history like Larry does, that he's had a great defeat in battle. Not yet. So, um, no, that's right. That's in between. That's between one and two. That's right. That's between one and two. Darius has had a defeat. Thank, thank you. That's where I was going. Um, I want to make sure I write down Memocon. Mm -hmm. Cause out of them all, that's the guy that speaks up, and he shows up a little bit later too. Okay. So he just points out the consequences. He doesn't tell him what to do yet. He just tells him this is because this she did this. Is this is right. what yeah. happened. Okay. Um, verse 17, for the queen's conduct will become known to all the women, causing them to look with contempt on their husbands by saying, King Ahasuerus commanded Queen Vashti to be brought into his presence, but she did not come. Have we changed at all? Yeah, no. Um, and how, well, how, did, how would they find out? Who was she supposed to be brought before? All the people. All the people, all right, in the courtyard. Where do you think they're going to go back home to? Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. She has influence over the women because she was throwing a banquet for the women. Correct. So obviously she's got a big influence on them. And just being queen, she has influence right. over, well, what does the queen do? What is the queen wearing? What is the queen? Yeah. If it pleases, um, sorry, this day the, lead, the ladies of Persia and Media who have heard of the queen's conduct will speak in the same way to all the king's princes and there will be plenty of, here's that word again, contempt mm -hmm. and anger. Where? Just as the king felt. Exactly. Where's that contempt and anger going to be? In the homes. In the homes. If it pleases the king, let a royal edict be issued by him and let it be written in the laws of Persia and Media so that it can't be repealed, that Vashti may no longer come into the presence of the king, of King Ahasuerus, and let the king give her royal position to another who is more worthy than she. So when the king's edict, um, which he will make is heard throughout all his kingdom, great as it is, can you just see him expounding <coughs> great as in, you know, let me tell you how great you are once more time. <laughs> that all women will give honor to their husbands, great and small. This guy's smart. Oh, right? Smart. I'm, doesn't say that, but yeah, I think he's really the agenda. spokesman. For all he definitely this. has an agenda. Well, I, yeah. I see his little sneaky agenda going on here. <laughs> yeah. You know, like. Well, I'm not saying he's married, and I'm not saying he's not. But if he's married, he knows what's going to happen in his household. Because, well, Queen Vashti didn't have to come. So. Well, he says the king's princess. And, and yeah, he's one of them. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. This word pleased the king. And the princes and the king did as Memocon proposed. So he sent letters to all the king's provinces to each province according to its script and to every people according, there's according to, according to, according to, uh, man, according to their language that every man should be the master in his own house and the one who speaks in the language of his own people. Now without going to commentaries, did you figure out what that meant, the one who speaks in the language of his own people? So that would be the princes? Because he, his kingdom is so huge that it's not all one language. Right. Right. Multiple languages, multiple customs. Right. So that's why it's written so in the script. So why does he have to speak in that? So because nobody well, can read exactly. Because not everybody reads or has access to reading. Okay. They have to be told. Good. Yeah. Good. Um, I looked at uh, one of uh, NIV said using his native tongue. So that's where, yeah, yeah. I would come up with that. Um, the results. Okay, plenty of contempt and anger would result on who would be reacting with contempt and anger? The wives of the wives. People. Exactly. Okay, okay. If it never, it, this is always and forever true, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. That's, that's just the way it is. You walk into the house, it's like, uh-oh, mom's not in a good mood. Ain't nobody happy around here until mama gets happy. 
That's what's going to happen. Another ang uh, point of contempt and anger would be Vashti. If that mm -hmm. edict wasn't written and she was back in, she could, you know, get rid of them out of because there has to be some sort of repercussions for her. Yeah. Well, and she knows that the, the king goes to them for counsel. Right. It's kind of like his Supreme Court. Where well, I'm saying the women would be, and but the but men so would go. She, the men would go. So she gets nothing. She was, she's the queen, and you asked her to come, and she gets. I oh, think, well, I guess she wasn't in a good mood or something. But if they left the door open, that she could come back in. So that's why they want to make it. He wants to make it an edict. If she so comes she back can't. in, she could have revenge. Oh, that's a good so point. So he's looking out for his head, too. Right. Not yeah. just at home, but in his position. But in his position as working. Why do you think he, he didn't have her killed? I don't know. Well, maybe their I laws don't know the culture. And I don't know the law. Maybe their laws didn't allow for that. And maybe that wasn't an offense great enough for... He, was but very they specific, did it. What can I do within the law? Because we so do much, know somebody got killed. So much of scripture at the end of chapter two. Took their head yeah. off when they wanted to. But that she didn't. But, I don't she, think her her offense was great enough for that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's no important the enough. The yeah. is the law that came. Right, and I don't think that was. I think it's maybe because he loved her enough and didn't want. She can't. She can't have a relationship anymore. She can't really do much. She's kind of. I think what she got is pretty bad. Yeah, that's a pretty rough. Without your life, then where did that go? Right. It's like Vashti who? What was she? Yeah. Man. And who's going to take her in? And look what she lived. Well, she still Look what she lived in. That got described pretty well. Maid, servants, whatever. Is she still allowed to stay in the palace? Well, she can't be in the presence of the king, so I'm thinking. Well, she well, she could be. But she had to. No, we don't know. Don't you think other women, the other women that they told uh, around the whole area that he ruled, uh, if, if those women would have seen her killed, I mean. Mm. What would have that done to those women? That's that's you a good know, point too. Uh, is my husband gonna just don't <laughs> kill? Does he me? have the right to kill me too? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good point. That, that, again, those are two drastic ends of the right. of the thing. Yeah. Um, punish Queen Vashti by removing her from the presence of the king, and she could never go back into his presence ever again. And give it to another more worthy. Okay. I think that was the bigger punishment. I do too. Because they were requested to come, obviously, to the presence of the king. Maybe she did have a little more access to him than we think, but I'm not going to see you anymore, but now you're not queen anymore. And can you even come see me at early point? Yeah. Mm. In, the, in the men's hostels, if the king is able to get rid of his queen like that, therefore, I'm just looking at the other side, but I think. I think this gentleman's got some underlying agenda going on here that if the king can get rid of his queen because of her disrespect, it means the husband can also get rid of the wife because of disrespect. Well, it would filter down, that's for sure. Yes. I mean, you, you, so the king did this, so does that give my husband the right? Right. And that had to be the fear of the women as well. I yeah, have to say the same thing women, with you. But now he's taken the affront to the king and expanded it, making it more personal to the princess and everybody else. Right. You she must have had a more because why was she why why wasn't she fearful not to go? Mm -hmm. Right? See, I think she had more free yes. access to him yes. before this. Yes. Like happened, okay. Mm -hmm. Than we think. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering too if it was maybe to protect his own reputation. Maybe he was a sweet guy and he didn't want to just react and kill her. And otherwise, his reputation would right. be, oh, the king's a hothead. Right. Yeah, he liked right. Her. And, he's, and he wasn't. He's not Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. I wonder how much like there was love. You know, they married for like little reasons and stuff. So how much was it love right. versus how much was you it? In I also don't know if there's any children, and that could be the that. mother of his children. So I don't, I don't know if there's any children at this point. I don't know in history. I looked up, nor do uh, I know if it mentions. Her son is the one that rules next. From they think it's not a hundred percent, but based off the history, they're pretty sure that the Ashtis. Yeah, the Ashtis or that, yeah, that, or that, yeah. However you say it, it's a crazy name. That that's weird. We was talking about that. That uh, I know that they think that it was Ashtis' son. Hmm. I think. Hmm. I mean, I'll look. Okay, so that might be another reason why. 
he wouldn't want to kill her. Yeah. Yeah. I had beautiful. to look up why, and she's beautiful, right? Yeah. Why, why ruin beauty? Don't she can't come ever in prison anymore, so he can't look at her. He's going to hang her somewhere. But, uh, First, right? the, uh, the next ruler, how do you say his name? As Artaxerxes. Artaxerxes. Whatever. Artaxerxes. He was born in the year of the great banquet described in Esther 1. That so was there's the, year the mother of, of his children. So he is the next answer. ruler. So we think, so based off that, and there's other stuff in here, they think Maybe that that's why he threw the banquet. Well, I mean, again, that's another reason why he wouldn't kill her. Because that's the mother of his child. So He was born the year of banquet. Maybe it was a celebration mm. of. Oh, yeah. Could have gone that way, too. Yeah, because his second, second banquet was for um, Esther. Like a wedding thing? Yes. The Holy Day Esther thing. Banquet. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. I just had to look up um, different things on it. It was uh, Obviously, it said every man should be the master in his own house and the one who speaks in the language of his own people, his native tongue. But it, that didn't give me enough clarity. Um, so I looked a little further, and it said oh. foreign wives. Now, that makes sense. Because again, you come from the Babylonian, yeah. they've conquered. The Medes and the Persians conquer. So, but the Medes and Persians don't just wipe everybody out, they let you live. So now you're talking about 127 provinces from India to Ethiopia. Many languages go back and forth through that. It's actually giving the man the decision of what language is spoken in his home. That was the edict. It evidently wasn't decided until then. Mm -hmm. So now he has the power to say, this is the language that's going to be spoken in my home, and that's it. This is what we're speaking. So no kids in your own language, yo. None. Like my kids. Right. <laughs> All right? None of that. You're my wife, um, this is my home, and this is what you speak. And so with them. obviously yeah. what follows is culture. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you lose like it's heritage. What? What's the year of the Tower of Babel? I don't know. Look it up, but I don't know. No, well, I just know a lot of it. Right? <laughs> but what book of the Bible? How long it? ago? Because that's when Genesis. the language is spread. Yeah, correct. Correct. Um, okay, chapter two. Anything? Again, we got a lot of stuff in here, too. <laughs> How do you Aram, whittle it down? Arams, Mordecai, yes, Queen Esther, a banquet, and a hanging. Say that again. Either. The two harems, two harems, Queen Esther, uh, because she's now queen. She's now queen. Yeah. A banquet for her. Right. And a hanging. And a hanging. And a hanging. I put Esther Prince finger in there, so I thought it was important. But it is important. It is important. It that is. is important. I, I didn't realize it was. It's mentioned three times. It's yeah. like wow. Mm -hmm. All right, verse one. Mm -hmm. After these things, what things? The parties and the edict. And the edict. Yeah. And bye bye Vashti. Right? Right. Bye. You're not queen anymore. They don't even give her the title anymore now that they talk about her. Right. They took away. Goodbye, Ty. Yeah. Just Vashti. Okay. <clears throat> when the so anger, which was great, of the king had subsided, he remembered Vashti, not called queen, Vashti, mm -hmm. and what she had done and what had been decreed against her. Then the king's attendants who served him said, let beautiful young virgins be sought for the king. Does he ask advice? No. This, this, this is part he's it. not asking for. Yeah. They're just giving it. Okay? It's made a lot more sense after realizing the whole, him losing to the Greeks after, between these two. That's so he's, he's, he's pride is down, he's not in the greatest spirit. Right. Like, you know, he's kind of, they're like, hey, let's bring you some virgin. Let's <laughs> make you happy, right? Okay? Because well, and again, they're looking battle did not make him happy. They're looking up for their own necks. So he's, he's True. thinking of Ashti and maybe thinking of bringing her back. That's really good. Well, I mean, even though there's that edict. But you're, you're right, but, hey, you did remember you know what? Her. Don't bring her back, let's bring in somebody else. And what, again, about the decree. What if he doesn't like the decree anymore? Mm -hmm. He's kind of stuck. Yeah. He is totally stuck. Yeah. It yeah. cannot be repealed. Yeah. He could change it. He could change it. He could redecree but, something else. But how do you say you can't come back into the presence and she's not queen anymore? That's pretty done. Yeah. Done, yeah, done. He can done. Them. Okay? Does it ever say he, that he loved Queen Vashti? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doesn't say. Yeah. Nope. But he loves Esther. 
but he loves Esther. Isn't I wonder cool? if her yeah. son was at the, if like maybe she was living in a different wing in the palace where he didn't see her. Because the next, her, if her son's the next ruler, you would think that he would want his son brought up by his mother. I don't, well, not by her, but at least in his palace. I know. Up, so but again, speculation because I I don't know. Boy, if I lived back in the times and understood the culture and how things were done, I'd know a lot. I'd know a lot. It doesn't say times. that he kicked her out of the palace. No, no, so, no. no. So but she just couldn't, couldn't, couldn't come in front. She just I didn't know anything. Yeah. Yeah. I right. always thought she just kind of even that. Devoted, like dumb to the second harem. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now it's weird. Now it's weird. Unless she just lost her job. That must be horrible. She just right. lost her job. But if he's still training his son to take his place, then he's getting reminded of her every All time. The time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the time. Okay, uh, verses 1 to 4. Let the king appoint overseers in all the provinces of his kingdom that they may gather every beautiful young virgin to the citadel of Susa to the harem into the custody of Haggai, the king's eunuch. Now, he's not one of the seven right. that went to get Vashti. This is another one. Different name. Who is in charge of the women, and let their cosmetics be given to them. Then let the young lady who pleases the queen, king be queen in place of Vashti. And the matter pleased the king, and he did accordingly. And he did accordingly. That's I, repeated. That's, that's a repeated phrase. I just, I love, I, I love marking things that are repeated. I'm like, oh. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Um, again, this is just a possible thing. Chosen queen. Esther's chosen queen. We got a murder plot. Thwarted and recorded. Make it's recorded part. Very important part that it's recorded. Yeah. And I want to know, well, when did they record that? Because I'm not going to remember. I'm going to tell you. I'm curious if these women wanted to go. Were they taken forcibly from their homes? Or were they like dying at the chance to possibly become queen? Uh, it's it's interesting, interesting to find how many times Esther was taken, and if you—I don't think she was willingly gone. No. I don't think based off. I don't think know. a lot of them were willing to go. Yeah, that's what. It was Especially the young time. virgins that might possibly be already betrothed to their beloved. Weirdly says he wonders how many like last minute marriages there were to keep them from having to go. Like I'll marry her real quick. Oh, have to that's go. a good thought. Mm -hmm. Or how long it took to go throughout 127 provinces. That's what I want. Yeah. That's yeah. what I want. So yeah. I really Renai, think the that new they one. came to this decision. Where's the fight. time? Yeah. How do we know the time of this? This is not a Cinderella story. No. <laughs> it's not in the first four verses. Seventh year of his reign. Uh, we know it's the seventh year of his reign, so four years later, later, which we could put verse 16 up at verse 1. After these things, when the anger of King Ahasuerus had subsided. Not necessarily. I mean, it That's could have been that this whole search took a, I mean, it maybe it took could. four maybe. years. It could four have. Four years or whatever. That's I'm what sorry. I'm what I meant was the timing of the chapter. Um, because we know it's at least four years after yeah. Vashti. That much I do know. Uh, now, but verse one could be two years could after. Be, yes. Could be one year because after. Again, so two how or long three does it years take? to search. Well, you got to travel right. throughout. So, so first one, provinces. Right? 127, 127 provinces. Plus, we know another year, six months for beautification, six months, 12 months for beautification. Well, they probably had it delegated. Like, each prince had his area and he had. So Which was stated in verse one. Of chapter they one, wasn't it? So right. still, okay? still it wasn't one time. person going through the whole kingdom. It's still a time consuming. Yeah, big deal. Just especially yeah. if they're from India and they have to go all the way to mm -hmm. Susa. That's well, gonna... and each woman had their own night with the king. So, but that was yes. after, yeah. That's after, after, after yes. their year. That was ap after, after their year. Correct. After, yeah. their year. after the year, after they go through the process. But I would assume like the ones that live close had their like year and time first, and it kind of kept going. That's possible. Rather than them all being at the capital. It's such the same a process time. of how do you bring all of those women into the Instead of all of them being there at the same house. time and having their year together and then taking a turn, that it was more oh, as God. they came, they were given their stuff. But remember, they had, it could only be very beautiful. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, I don't many think of there's them. hundreds We're coming from each province. God yeah. is a God of details and he didn't and say I that. And I think that's so actually. <laughs> Was the plumb into this? Yeah, Here's exactly. Vashti. Got to be at least that pretty it's or so prettier. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing below. Whoa. I still don't get how it takes a year to get pretty. <laughs> what exactly did they get refined? Well, it's training, training, training too, on how to how to act and and to oh, with yeah. all the royal and how to come into royal. Weren't they right. young too? Like yes. they weren't like twenties and thirties. No. They were like teens. Yeah. 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 So maybe they were together. becoming. 14, I mean, after going through that puberty, and, and the eunuch had to file say so's eye for beauty was different than good point. Princess eyes who lives in sure. 
we that's out there a good point. someplace. Uh, yeah, but no, so right. Like but again, who's who do they have to compare it to? Vashti. Okay, it has to be prettier, or at least as pretty as Vashti, and she was very beautiful. So this is a good example of, you know, to make an idea for getting an hour to get ready. This is my 12 months. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, it could be worse. And the king um, not sitting there looking at him as they come by. He's there. not the one that, yeah. yeah right. He's not, he's not the, um, the solution was presented by his servants and he listened. Yes, okay. Um, verse 5 through 7, we get a character that we haven't seen before. Okay. Now, there was at the citadel in Susa a Jew. Why is it important that he's a Jew? Why does God put that in there? <laughs> Because this book is about this is that's right. Israel. This is a Jewish book. Okay, who are his chosen people? The Jews. What does history revolve around? Is according to the Bible. The Jews. The Jews. Okay, well, this yeah. is important that Mordecai is a Jew. Well, if you look forward, you know why. Too. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Um, whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jair? Which, by the way, I said Jair last week was a woman. J.L. was the woman. Right. J.L. was the woman. I was like, Shh. it's on recording. No, it isn't. Because the recording didn't work. <laughs> Thank you. <Lord. laughs> the son of Shidei, the son of Kish, and a Benjamite. Mm -hmm. Now from Judges, do we like the Benjamites? Not so much. Yeah. Not yeah. a bad character. But hey, Mordecai is kind of a getting me better to like Off, it. Off, Off, the was in that 600. <laughs> <laughs> but he stayed behind, though. Oh, that, that's right. They stayed behind. Just call my great great grandfather his ambassador. Yeah, exactly. You can change the time. Mean that I'm the same way. Is right. Jerusalem in, in, in the Benjamin territory? It's kind that? of on the border of Benjamin and Shemitah. We were trying to figure that one out because it's like, yeah. is, is it in there? Or well, but it also says in here that he was exiled from Jerusalem. So it sounds like that his uh, family was in Jerusalem. Who had been taken into exile from Jerusalem with the captives who had been exiled with Jerusalem. Jeconiah, right. king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had exiled. Why do we want to know that? His time. Because he was right. in time. 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 Where, why is Mordecai, and why are we talking about Susa and Medes and the Persians, and why do I care that Mordecai is a Benjamite, and why do I care that this is the now the seventh year of his reign, and why do I, ah. Oh, because God is putting you in this time and place in Scripture. So I don't remember kings well. Did Benjamites kind of redeem themselves during the kings, or are they still back at the judges' time when nobody liked them? Uh, the fact that Jerusalem's there makes me think well, they aren't quite as hated at this point. I Saul was the up. son of Kish, a Benjamite. Okay. So Saul being the first king, I guess the Benjamites were... And he didn't turn out to be okay. No, he didn't turn out too well. So uh, I'm no, like, but uh, he didn't manage to get picked. So and he did manage he to get picked by God. He was God, a good man to so. begin with. I mean, that's right. why he was chosen. And God chose right. the yeah. Jerusalem the where the temple is. is. So. This was after the whole Benjamite thing. God chose Jerusalem to be where the temple is. So, and Jerusalem's right on the border. But again, like Larry was saying, just because my great great grandfather was doesn't right. mean mm -hmm. I have to be. Yeah. And the kings prove that. Yeah. Over yeah. and over and over again. <laughs> Indeed. Okay. But anyway, Mordecai was an ancestor of Saul. Because he was a Benjamite. Well, no. Saul in uh, 1 Chronicles 8.33, uh, Kish begat Saul. Uh, 1 Samuel 9.11, Saul was a son of Kish. Yes. I Is think it the same Kish? Yeah, but what about the timeline? Do we know it's the same Kish? Because it doesn't seem like that would um, really work out. That would be way. Yeah. Because yeah. this Kish is only three generations up from Correct. Mordecai versus Saul seems way farther back. Did you say? Because I saw Jair too, yeah, and I was like, hey, Jair's a judge. Oh, wait, that's not the judge, because this exactly. doesn't line up with Jair. Exactly. That's what I had to look at. I'm like, no, that does not fit. Because so, I went to Judges 10-3, and I'm like, oh, is this the same guy? guy? I'm just wondering I'll if I'll go dig. Time. Not the same guy. I'll go dig. Yeah. Verse 7 said he was bringing up Hadassah, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, which made her his what? Cousin. Cousin. For she had no father or mother. Now, the young lady was beautiful of form and face. And when her father and her mother died, Mordecai took her as his own daughter. Now, he's a Jew. He's old, too. <laughs> right? He's yeah. a great-grandson of one taken into exile from Jerusalem. That doesn't mean he lived during that time. Mm. It just means his exactly. family did. To Babylon during King Jeconiah's reign in 597 B.C. Why do I want to know that? Why do I want to put a date to that? 
timeline because the book of Esther happens between what and what? 483 and 473. Good. 583 and 583. 483 and 473 BC. Correct. Okay? That's a long time. That's 100 years. Okay? He brought up his cousin as his own daughter. Okay? We also know, because of this history book, he didn't return. His family did not return to Jerusalem to rebuild the city and then later the walls. Why? They were comfortable. Ezra 1.5 says, only those whose spirits stirred returned. Why wasn't his family's spirit turned? I don't know. That's the sovereignty of God. I don't, I don't know. How's God going to be here at that time? There you go. He needed to be God's here way. to take care of Esther so Esther could go but, you know, then you have to believe that God has a total history plan and all that kind of stuff. And he knew this was going to happen, so he needed Mordecai here for Esther there so that Esther could go here for this plan for here. Exactly. That's exactly right. That's why she needed be to be here. Amazed. Yes, yes. Still has be amazed. Well. Um, verse 8, so it came about when the command and decree of the king were heard, just like they said it was going to be heard, and many young ladies were gathered to the citadel of Susa in the custody of Haggai, that Esther was taken to the king's palace into the custody of Haggai, who was in charge of the women. Now, the young lady pleased him and found favor with him. Who's the him? Haggai. Right. Haggai. So he quickly provided her uh, with her cosmetics and food, gave her seven choice maids from the king's palace, and transferred her and her maids to the best place in the harem. So now we have places in the harem. Yeah, yeah. There are stages in the harem. She's not at the bottom, she's at the front. So let's, on your characters of uh, people in your homework, tell me some things that you learned about Esther here. Just from that. She did what Mordecai said. Why? So she was humble and you know, beautiful, so that's why Hawkeye. Yeah. Not like Busty. She will come. Not like that. Oh, right. Right. Okay. She made best in a bad situation. I can't imagine being in a situation, but she was positive enough that she found favor with people. If she was in there grumbling and complaining and not happy with it, she wouldn't have found favor. So what do you but find out about her character because of that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She was respectful. She was respectful. She was respectful. Very respectful. Very respectable, and she's young. We know she, she is young. She has some kind of faith. You've got to have faith and hope to be able to handle situations like that. Right? You have to. And we know later on, just because most of us have read Esther, that she does have faith. And right. she's holding the secret that she's true. That's right. So, so. That's got to trouble her because she doesn't feel like she's being totally honest. But yeah. she's got to do what Mordecai tells her to do. So yeah. that's on Mordecai, not really on her. <laughs> Okay. But she was there. That's right. Not Mordek. <laughs> now think about it. If her parents are dead, she or she's an orphan. orphan. Mm -hmm. That's how I okay. Call her. She's she has beautiful. No bounty to be married. I mean, we don't know how she much no. the bounty to be married. Right. Like right. Oh well, yeah. She wouldn't have had it. Well, I don't know. Mordecai might have because she, he raised her as yeah. he, he might have as his daughter. As his daughter. Um. So again, we were asked to compare and contrast. <laughs> So Vashti was beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, we know they the king wants a beautiful life. They were both yeah. queen. They were both queen, right? right. right. She was younger. Yes, yes. had to be. <laughs> so again, we notice because we're inductive students that there's two harems and there's situations in the harem, yes. levels in the harem. So I don't know why it's important, but God wanted us to know that she was taken to the front of the harem. <laughs> to the top. Do we know there's just two? Uh, there's two harems, but do we know there's just two though? Does yes, it say that? but there's sections in the harems. Right, it does okay. say that. There's ranks. Yeah. Okay. It does say they. I didn't pick up. The virgins were in the first harem, and concubines were in the second. Exactly. The oh, time. okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I thought the given food was but weird. That, like, did they not give them all food? <laughs> so why did she bring out the fact that they even the gave the palace them? food? Uh, which we learned from Daniel. The mountain type, the of time. Yes. Mountain time. Yes. Because of the times, we know that there's certain food that is served yeah. in the palace because we know what that's what happened to Daniel right. and his three friends. Um, he's, she is favored by Haggai, given cosmetics, food, seven choice maids, and then she's transferred to the best place in the harem. 
I bet she didn't make friends among women. I think of what's a yeah, bachelorette. Yeah, she's got to be going on in there. Because <laughs> I think like bachelorette, the new, you know, like the oh, modern day bachelorette type thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, all these women fighting for the same guy. <laughs> Miss America. She's now, surrounded with seven And again, things. we talk about she did not make known to her people or her kindred for Mordecai um, had instructed her that she should not make them known. So you read that and you go, I'm assuming she I didn't act like a Jew. She was eating the corpus. Just because how else would she make them know? I mean, did they just walk around talking about God? You know, I don't know. So she said she wasn't hungry. Right? I just, I don't know what making it known um, and holding it back would look like. I, I don't know. Well, for one um, thing, you wouldn't talk about your family. You wouldn't. Yeah, that's the, very least that's the honest truth. Well, she but if she's you've ever been in Israel, you know that they look different than you do. Now, what did the Medes and Persians look like? I don't know. I don't know. But I know that Jewish people in Jerusalem, in Israel, do not look like that. They don't have the skin color, the hair color, the eye color. They don't dress like me. They don't look like me. They don't eat like me. That's just different. Remember, at this time, so, there's a big, vast mixture of Cultures. People, there cultures is. And 127 system. provinces. You know, that's a good point because that would be easier to blend. Blend. Yeah. And they have been there. So already. I'm different. So she, time. so she, so she, you know, and, and you know, yeah. being the king and liking art, he likes variety. Right. Of when all I came to this kind of country, stuff. I did not like this food here. I only have been here 25 years and I love barbecue sauce. So uh, there was right. there <laughs> how many, how many. Years Over like 100 years, yeah. years later, right? So, so she I'm sure that they um, used to, depending yeah, on how exactly. culturally set the people Mordecai's yeah. family was. The yeah. people she's living around, she's always been around. Always, yeah. she's never done anything different. She's so they, a lot of and they've she's never known anything different too, of her, right? Right. She, so again, she, these yeah. are great questions. These are great places for your mind to go because it's like you're inductive studying. You're not just reading it and that's the word. It's like, yeah, but, but what is that? What does that mean? What does that mean she didn't make it known? And, then, and if she was going to make it known, how would she make it known? I mean, you could say, I'm a Jew, but she didn't say that. I would think that they and why was that bad? Books. That's my question. Why was that obviously bad? Because Mordecai said, don't do that. So it must be bad. Why would that have been bad? Well, they don't see the history under persecution. Because historically, they knew the Jews were originally the brought there in exile. There they were you conquered. go. They were conquered for a reason. I mean, they know their history. So right. why make yourself be on the wrong side of history for right. those people? And we know Ezra and Nehemiah, because we've looked on the timeline, uh -huh. are going on. So we went to Ezra 4-6, which was really important, because that's happening. Okay? Um, why was Ezra 4-6 important? Because you've got a really good nugget there. Well, because people are okay. still... Speaking poorly and accusing the Jews. Correct. Correct. Um, you want a page number of your homework? What page is that? You know? Nine. 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 Yeah. It's actually the Samaritans who are sending him back to force. Okay. But the point is, yeah. this is a bad report. A bad They're report. accusing that verse six. Yeah. They are, and the accusation against the Jews was made at. The end of his reign, the beginning of his reign, and the middle where? It's near the beginning of his reign. Near the beginning. And basically what they're saying is, oh, the Jews are trying to rebuild build. themselves and get out from underneath right. your rule. Come. There you go. There you go. But who had given them permission to go and build? Cyrus. Who co-reigns with? A hazardous. Yeah. Okay? Do you see why that's important for yeah. us to know that? Because now, that makes us look so smart that we know, well, but that's not bad because this is and this happened here and this happened here and this isn't the this is the going on at the same time it's hugely important for us to know that okay being the inductive students that you are now you have a historical setting of Esther which makes us understand the book it's about so four much years. better it's about four years from the time the accusations are made until uh, Xerxes is king until Xerxes is king yeah, it, They're yeah. saying that it's in the um, before the events in Esther two, uh -huh. which on our time thing, I thought I verified would be correct. After because Ezra, you're, you're but remember Ezra is in two parts. 
Okay, that was important for me. I didn't understand that either until I looked on this. Right. Chapters one through six um, happen 538 to 516. Chapter seven to 10 don't happen until 457 and they're only a year long. I didn't right. know that either. That, that makes a lot of sense. And again, we're in, that was in chapter four, which would have been in that beginning part. Yep. Okay. And according to the time things, the rubble led the first group back to rebuild the temple, which you're reading about when you read Ezra, you read his name. Okay? You're well, like, so the temple was finished in 516, right? Correct. Yes. So that means that these complaints had to have been before 516. Correct. And so what do we know is already completed during Esther's time? The temple is already yeah. done. Yeah. We want to know that. Because this is a Jewish book. And what is the most important thing to them ever in the history? The temple. the temple. What is still the most important thing to them ever? Temple. The temple. Why do they go up to the Wailing Wall and wail? Because the temple. temple. The temple. That's the it's last the part of Solomon's temple that was left. This is it. They have when you read about what Solomon's temple looked like, they got a lot to cry about. Even when Herod went in and rebuilt it, it was nothing, nothing compared to Solomon's temple. So. That's the wailing wall. A lot of people think they wail because they're praying. Mm -hmm. They're wailing because of what they lost. This is nothing compared to what we had. We lost it all. We've been yes, and that's all true. Well, at this point in time, while they have the temple, they don't have Jerusalem restored. No, they do not have walls. They have no walls are not. So they're still trying to get themselves back together and away from. Exactly. Another yeah. reason not to go home. Uh, go home there's another reason not to no go home. Yeah. Walls protect us, and the walls are not completed. Right. Okay. So there's some people that don't like us. Uh, still people, and there's still people today, and there will always be people that do not like the Jews. Verse 11. Every day, Mordecai walked back and forth in front of the court of the harem to learn how Esther was and how she fared. Why would he do that? He loved her. Oh. Yes, he was her daddy. Yeah, her She's been yeah. taken from him. He had no say whatsoever. And also let her know that I'm here. Huh? That's my point. Yeah. You could just she could kind of go out and okay, okay, daddy's there. Well, what are you here for? I wonder how many people for. had access to to the court right? of the harem. How do we know he had a place of prominence? Because, because he was there. sitting well, at the gate. gate. He was at the gate. Yeah. Sat at the yeah. gate. Okay, let's yeah. continue. Now, when the turn of each young lady came to go into King Ahasuerus, after the end of her 12 months, so I'm putting 479 BC here, okay? Mm -hmm. um, for the days of their beautification were completed as follows. Six months with oil of myrrh and six months with spices and the cosmetics for women. The young lady would go into the king in this way. Anything that she desired was given to her, given her to take with her from the harem to the king's palace. In the evening, and we women go, aha, she would go in. <laughs> and in the morning, aha. <laughs> She would return to the second harem, and now yeah. she has a different title. Right, she's yeah. no longer a virgin. She's no longer a virgin, <laughs> she's a concubine. Yeah. To the custody of Shaaskaz, the king's eunuch who was in charge of the concubines. This is no longer Haggai. Right. He's in charge right. of the virgins. Right. Okay, this guy's in charge of the concubines. She would not go again to the king unless the king delighted in her, and she was summoned by name. Name. Mm -hmm. Gila's yeah, beauty, right. her face and form. And but he'd have to know her name. That's a lot of virgins to know and pick out Esther by name. Wow. Wow. Well, you have an easy name. I can't keep the names on a beauty pageant for the states in my head. He knew by name. Now, when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Ab Abihail, that's important to me. I'm like, oh, that's her daddy. So I put that back a little bit, okay? Because you're inductive, see? The uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her as his daughter, came to go into the king. She did not request anything except what Haggai, the king's eunuch, who was in charge of the women, advised. I want to know what it is. Right? <laughs> Did you ask sure. me thinking, what is that? What, what, what was that advice? What well, did he say? Well, it's all his specific training. He Doesn't that also tell you his her character? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Jesus, How many beautiful it. women do you know? Proud and arrogant and haughty. And they know and, everything, and you can't tell them anything because they how many has he been around? He knows quality. And he knows what yes. Hazarus he likes. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, so Esther was taken to, no, let's not go past that one. Wait. So I love that, though. What a great daddy. She was taken. Where's she taken? Which one is she at? Where's that in the palace? I'm going to. So he's just walking always back and forth on life. But what daddy wouldn't do that for his daughter? It's like, have they hurt you? Are you okay? Is it a that's year? The Remember, time. she's been there. Here. That's what we are lacking now. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. She is allowed one night with the king. She returns, and now she's a concubine. So different harems. She can only return if she's summoned by name, and she used wisdom. By heeding the advice of Hagar, hey, did that help her? Absolutely, mm -hmm. that helped her. It doesn't say all the rest of them. Now, maybe all the rest, some of them, not all of them, would have asked his wisdom. She found favor in all who saw her, not that knew her, that saw her. Not because she was beautiful. Inside and out. Inside and out. How can you see that? They did. So Esther was taken to King Ahasuerus to his royal palace in the tenth month, which is the month Tebeth in the seventh year of his reign. And that's where we went. This has happened four years after he got mad at Vashti? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow. Right. They even gives you the month in this one. The what? They gives you the month. I know. I was like, why is it important that? now that they tell us what month is? Right? The king loved. Esther more than all the women, and she found favor and kindness with him more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. This is 478. See? Okay. Then the king gave a great banquet, banquet number four, <laughs> Esther's banquet for all his princes and his servants. He also made a holiday for the princes and gave gifts according to the king's bounty. Wow. Which is a lot. Yes. If you think about his bounty. Okay? 478 BC. Again, we're going to say four years after Vashti's refusal. She's loved, favored, and crowned. I, uh, he even names this banquet Esther. And all the king's princes and servants, this man loves this girl. A holiday is yeah. decreed and gifts given. All right? They're like, really? Another thing said the holiday meant it granted remission of taxes. Cool. For all the provinces. Yeah. I'm like, well, for how long? I don't know. <laughs> Glad I don't know, but at least during the banquet. Mm -hmm. Okay? Verses 19 to 23. It says, when the virgins were gathered together the second time, then Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate. I don't know why they were the second time. Uh, that was confusing to me, and I couldn't chase that rabbit. So. <laughs> She's still called a virgin. I was going to ask that. Are the virgins still virgins, or are they just still Mordecai's? This is the group that was. So why are they gathered a second time? Maybe he did Maybe to allow them to go home if they wanted to. Exactly. Oh, no, because king, they weren't chosen. I don't think they were chosen. No. No, well, they were so king would have them. to do anything with if he didn't want or some of them. Maybe he would just send them, them back maybe as they Maybe like once he saw Esther, he's like, this is the one, and quit and take more. So maybe that's why they're gathering Maybe there, there were still time. virgins that never actually made it to his room. We know they're still in harem one to one. Right. At least we know that. So yeah. I mean, since it says virgins, that's kind of where I went. Maybe like once he met Ezra, he was done. Like, I like this one. I'm done. I went there that he didn't want to do whatever. He didn't want anything else. He just wanted Esther. Yeah. The important part of this forest. verse was that Mordecai was sitting at the gate. Right. I want to chase the other rabbit, but later. Um, why do we want to know that Mordecai's sitting at the gate? Keeping track. What is about to happen? Keeping track, yeah. Keeping track, but nobody's well, at the gate unless you're a prominent person. Right. It's part of his job. There, and it's part of his job. Good. Esther had not yet made known her kindred or her people, even as Mordecai had commanded her. Again, this is repeated. Mm -hmm. For Esther did what Mordecai told her, as she had done when, she's not under his care anymore. 
but she still does what he said. Yeah. Isn't that something? Well, it says that when she was up, she continued like she was obedient under his care, and she still and she still is. So she was a good kid. Okay, she's not nasty. <laughs> right. She's not nasty. And Mordecai's a smart guy. So. Oh boy. In those days, while Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate, he's a Jew, don't forget that, mm -hmm. Bigthan and Teresh, two of the king's officials from those who guarded the door, became angry and sought to lay hands on King Ahasuerus. But the plot became known to Mordecai, because he's in a prominent place and he would have heard that at the gate. And he told Queen Esther, and Esther informed the king, in Mordecai's name, why Mordecai's name? She's the queen. Why not just tell him? Again, her character. Again, her character. Honestly. Because she didn't find it out. Mordecai found it out. So let me give credit where credit's due. Mordecai just told me because I had access to you mm -hmm. or to people who are around you that can tell you. Right. Okay? Because and when the, it's also safety concern for her. Sure it is. Sure it is. Yep. Agreed. What's going to happen to your husband happens to you. And Mordecai knows that. Too. Yeah. Wait, Esther, yeah. how did you get this information? Right. Well, and revealing a plot would give, I mean, we as we see later, like Mordecai eventually does get rewarded for it. So I kind of see her taking care of her dad, right. too. It's and her husband, like, well, all yeah. at the same time. Yes. Yeah. Now, when the plot was investigated and found to be so, they were both hanged on a gallows, and it was written in the book of the Chronicles in the king's presence. presence. So he right. does know who did it and knows it was written down. He just forgot. Okay? Because, again, that's towards the other part of Esther. Mordecai, again, is now a person that we need to write down some character qualities about. And hopefully we've got a lot in there about him. Um, we know who to have a character thing, lots of space left over. So we got Mordecai, the king, and Esther, definitely left a lot of space. Vashti, not so much. I just put a little part on her and then I'm done. He's a Jew. He sat at the king's gate, which is a place of prominence. We know he overhears a plot to murder people. People are not very careful. Maybe those people right? who sit in the gate didn't like the king. That, uh, that's what I'm wondering. I'm like, he must have, they must have been sitting at the gate with him, but we know they're yeah. in his guard, so that would make sense. Throughout yeah. that part, don't they gather at the gate? I mean, even in the New Testament, the, the right. scribes gathered at the gate, right. and that's custom. where they... And the people would come around the gate talking about town things yeah okay he tells esther who is still doing as he has instructed her even though she's queen mm -hmm. she still knows where wisdom is coming from and she's listening to it what a good daddy he has been. right she's never been in a place like this what do you do here <laughs> okay she, knows he loves she informs the king but in mordecai's name so she doesn't take the credit murderers are hanged and it was recorded in the book of the chronicle in the king's presence. Again, God thinks these things are important. These are just some lessons learned that I wrote down. You have probably come up with a lot more, or maybe some of the same. She finds favor in the eyes of all who saw her, but not for her beauty. It doesn't say that. They were all beautiful. Though she's beautiful. We know she's beautiful. That's not the reason it said that she found favor. Okay? Hey, guy, all who saw her, that's a lot of people. You just take that, all who saw her. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a lot of people. Okay? She's not bitter. Though she was orphaned and taken to a foreigner's palace, it doesn't say that she's all angry and bitter and or that she was an orphan. And she, okay, why was she orphaned? Had to do something with the exile, go be in a foreign land, her mom and dad are dead. Why? I don't know. She seeks out and takes advice. Mm -hmm. I don't see any of this in Vashti. Okay, she doesn't say she sought advice as to why should, should I go before the king now when he summons me or not? No. <laughs> She's submissive, which is not like Vashti. She doesn't seem to be proud or haughty. Again, we've only gotten into two chapters, but that's not her character quality. Now, this is what I wanted to check with the rest of y'all. Did you think that was a hard assignment? Put these events in order regarding the temple. That is page eight of homework. 
What do you think? And are these accurate according to what you found? Because again, this is, you're going to get, I think, a, a little bit even more of this when you listen to Kay. Um, why this is important that we know where Esther fits in Scripture, what's going on during the times, and all of that. Okay? According to that thing, it says 605, the Jewish captivity. That was the first one. Who do we know came in and got it? Nebuchadnezzar. So we know that's Babylon. Because we've read Daniel, the statue immediately comes into our head. Because we're reading about the Medes and Persians, so we know Babylon is no longer. The head's gone of the statue. We know the Medes and Persians are now. But because of prophecy and God's word, we know the Greeks are coming. The Medes and Persians don't know that. Okay? 586, the temple is destroyed. Okay, that's one that they just always go all the time. I mean, that's just repeated, you know, 586, 586. All, they just repeat that all the time. Okay? Um, that one I'm confident of. 539, Babylon is destroyed. Babylon is destroyed. Mm -hmm. So if you have an inductive study Bible and you want to go to the statue in Daniel, you could write 539, head is gone. Mm -hmm. Okay? 536, the rubble returns to build Jerusalem. Where did we find that? What book did we find that in? There's only one of your cross references. Because he's not mentioned in Ezra. Was that Chronicles or was that Ezra? Ezra. Ezra. It was Ezra. Okay? We know he returns to build Jerusalem. Who's the prophet we always know that's, that's building the wall? Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Okay? So this is Jerusalem. This is not the walls. This is just the Jerusalem, the city. This is not the temple either. 533 to 516, Ezra is the prophet. That's important because we're getting information from Ezra. 534, the temple work stopped. Because according to our chart, it started and stopped in three different times. If you go to Israel, you will see where it started, stopped, started, stopped, started, stopped. You can see that. 534, temple work stopped. 520, it resumes under Darius the what? The Mede. Right, Darius the Mede, because we go back to Daniel. Make this law, make this law because it cannot be changed. Right. Zechariah and Haggai are prophets. So where else could we go to read if we want more information? Those, Those minor prophets. prophets. Right. So now we've got Ezra, Nehemiah, we've got Haggai, and we've got Zechariah that we could go to to get more information during the time. Not necessarily about Esther, mm -hmm. just about during the times, what was going on. 516, temples finished, but not the walls. That happens during who? Nehemiah, okay? And of what little I know about Nehemiah, the book, never sat down and studied it, but read it. I know that they're building, and they've got their sword. And they're doing the wall, and they've got their sword. Because those people, yes. Enemies, like enemies, it. enemies. Yes, they do not want this city rebuilt. So that's our first lesson in Esther. Isn't it amazing how confused it was? You would think right. that you cannot get so much out of no, it. No, it's just a lovely little story about exactly. a lady that gets taken and she's a Jew <laughs> the and she becomes a queen. Isn't that sweet? Ah. Mm -hmm. Wow! And there's only 10 chapters, and the 10th chapter is just know about this big. Okay? Anybody else want to say, this was my aha moment? I was like, wow! I was still there, Isaiah. Yes, that, that was a hundred years and you're going to name him? Yeah, named him and he was right. Yeah, awesome. I was staring at everybody who I saw yesterday. <laughs> that was Janella and Tommy. <laughs> Can you imagine though if you, if you were a priest and your job is to teach the Israelites and all of a sudden this guy Cyrus becomes king and you're like, Ooh, yes, I know that. Man. Wait, I know that in there. It's like, that would have been shouted from the mountaintops. It's like, look, this is happening. Isaiah said it's going to happen. You know. I just imagine any time there was a thing, that's my name, Cyrus, or heard of my name, Cyrus. Is that the one? Is that the one? 
But it's what I'd be like. Wait, is that the one? Does he fit with the statues as well? Yeah. It's just amazing. We just think how many prophecies there are in the Old Testament. I know. I know. That's why I'm an Old Testament junkie. That's. Who was it that pointed out to Cyrus that his name was written by a prophet 100 years before he was born? Yeah, does it even say that it was? Most of them seem to know their other histories of the other countries, so there's a good chance he's heard of it. There is a good chance. Yeah. You're right. You're right. There's a good chance. Patty and I were watching a, a movie about Daniel one time, and 